as the fight for control over the oil-rich Libyan coastline continues, the U.S. is stepping back from its leading role in the operation. Washington will still oversee the logistics of the mission, but has encouraged other NATO countries to increase their military contribution. Artis Ganacic Khan looks at how Libya could be just the start of wider U.S. goals in the region. As waves of public rage sweep through North Africa and the Middle East, world powers jump on them. As many analysts say, in an attempt to direct the waves of unrest in a way that's most favorable for them. In Libya, forging relationship with the opposition so that if Gaddafi goes, there are people there to do business with. As Syria popular wrath gathers steam, some experts say Western powers might see the advantages of getting involved there too. These three countries, Iran, Syria and Libya, are the main countries that will not align themselves automatically to the global power elites or the Western powers' uh, interests and objectives in North Africa and in the Middle East. As, for example, Egypt will do uh, or used to do with Hosni Mubarak and definitely Kuwait and Saudi Arabia. Syria is Iran's closest ally in the region and the calls to support the revolt in Syria often come with mentions of Iran. Syria is obviously a strategic ally for Iran in the in the region, and without Syria, Iran loses their, their bridge, their land bridge to Lebanon and their Hezbollah forces. So, of course, Hezbollah would suffer if the Syrian regime uh, was to fall, and that would destabilize Iran and weaken its power in the region, which would be an obvious benefit to the Anglo-American forces. Some experts even believe that destabilization is part of a strategy the West pursues in the region. Region. We are seeing reflected a strategy which includes, amongst other points, the generalized weakening of the sovereign nation states and the sovereign regimes in the Arab world in order to try to isolate Iran, leave it with very few, perhaps no, friendly uh, countries in the region, and that will then leave Iran pretty much alone, at least in the Arab world, and would facilitate further turmoil inside Iran. Although the U.S. Secretary of State has ruled out America's involvement in Syria for now, the country's defense secretary called for the Syrian army to, quote, empower a revolution and follow the example of Egypt's military. Syria and Iran are on America's list. At some point, they will rise to the head of the queue, just the way Libya did. Many say Iran, though, would be a tough call. And no matter how much Washington would want the regime there to fall, for now, it's seen as a mission impossible. I'm sure that there are some in the U.S. who would love to uh, attack Iran, and there are others who would like to take over the Iranian opposition. I think they know that the Iranian opposition is not so fond of the United States. Uh, they have a long memory in Iran. People remember the role of the United States in overthrowing the, uh, the precursor to the Shah of Iran, overthrowing the democratically elected government of Mossadegh back in 1953. So I don't think the U.S. would be welcomed. And I think many in Washington know that. With Libya being torn apart by the war and anti-government protests gaining momentum in Syria, the question on everyone's mind is, who might be next? I'm Ganesh Shekhan reporting from Washington, RT.